Hello Stings, this will be part one in a series of videos for your fall semester review and we are looking at um, problems one through four in this video. For the first problem they want us to um, figure out which set of ordered pairs represents y as a function of x. Remember a function means that no x value repeats. So that is what we're going to do is check our x values. No x values repeat in answer choice A. We do have an x value repeating in answer choice B. For answer choice C, we do have the x value here of 3 repeating. And in the final answer choice D, we have 2 repeating. So neither B, C, or D can be our answer because they do have x values that repeat. So our answer choice is A. For problem number two, we are looking at a pattern here. So this is the, this is going to be our n values. One third is our first n, so that's the first number. This is the second number, third number, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Since everything except the 3 and the 12 are in fraction form, I'm going to rewrite the 3 and the 12 in fraction form with thirds as my denominator. So this becomes 9 over 3, and 12 becomes 36 over 3. So now I can look at this pattern. Notice that all the denominators are 3, so I need a 3 down here. Looks like C and D are not going to be my answer choice. So this says take 2 times n. This says take n and square it. So if I double 1, I don't get 1. If I double 2, I get a 4. If I double 3, I don't get a 6. So it should not be choice A. So I look at 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared. These are your numbers that you're going to be um, squaring or doubling or whatever it is that they want you to do. So you got to make sure that you number each of your terms. So this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So the nth term would be um, n squared over 3. Okay, for problem number 3, it says two functions are given below. We have f of x and g of x. f of x has a slope of negative 4 and a y-intercept of 1 g of x has a slope of negative 4 and a y-intercept of 1 half. So these two lines have the same slope, so they are parallel. And they have a different y-intercept. f is a half a unit above g. So f is over g, um, g is below f. So how does a graph of f compare with the graph of g? The graph of f is less steep. That's not true because they're parallel. They have the same steepness. The graph of f has the same y-intercept. That's not true because it has a 1 where g has a 1 half. The graph of f is parallel. That is true because they have the same slope. The graph of f is steeper. That's not true because they are parallel. And the final problem for this particular video will be problem number four. And we have a couple of ways to work this one out. So I'm going to do this by hand first, and then I'll show you in the calculator. So we can look for our change in x and our change in y. It says, which equation best describes the relationship between the corresponding values of x and y shown in the table? So looking at the table, we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 3. So this is important. This is our y-intercept. And then we have a 1, 5, and a 3, and a 9. So if we look at our change in x, to get from negative 2 to 0, we would add 2. To get from 0 to 1, we would add 1. To get from 1 to 3, we would add 2. For our change in y, to get from negative 1 to 3, we would add 4. To get from 3 to 5, we would add 2. To get from 5 to 9, we would add 4. So our change in y over change in x, we have 4 over 2, 2 over 1, and 4 over 2. All of these will reduce to be 2. So we know we have a slope of 2, so it's either b or c. So 
we look at the y-intercept that we saw from the table and see that that's a positive 3, so our answer choice is C. Our other option is to do this in the calculator. So let me, whoops, clear out the calculator. We go to stat, edit, and we'll put negative 2, 0, 1, and 3 into L1. Negative 1, 3, 5, and 9 into L2. Go back to stat. We're going to calculate our linear regression, which is number 4. And see that we definitely have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 3. So if we substitute those values in, let's see if you can see that. Let me try that again. Move this over. There we go. Okay, so turning the line on will help you guys with that. Okay, so here we have our data entered into STAT. Then I went back to STAT, calculate option number four, which was our linear regression, and we see that we have a y-intercept of three and a slope of two, which gave us answer choice C. So this is problems one through four of part one. In part two, we will be taking care of problems five through eight.